Good morning from the Scottish Highlands. Danny, how did you sleep? Uh, all, all right, like, we, we were obviously pretty tired, so I think I could have slept on rock. Um, lack of a pillow was a bit of a miss. I sort yeah. of rolled up some clothes and used that. Yeah, same. But on the plus side, sleeping on what was ultimately a glorified prison bread, bed, uh, it's fixed my back. My back was really hurting yesterday and it, now it's absolutely fine. <laughs> Posture is everything, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The flattest <laughs> thing possible. Yeah. I don't want to lie as well. I wanted to say I slept like a baby. I, I think I probably had about one hour's uninterrupted sleep, but at least I was technically lying down for seven and a half hours. So yeah, yeah. that's enough. Feeling fresh enough. We wanted to ideally leave at about seven in reality, didn't we? But it's taken us... This is the thing with camping. It's probably taken us an hour. To pack up, yeah. Hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And it's cold and it's wet, so everything's cold, really wasn't wet. It? Yeah, yeah. It's like when we were riding yesterday. The visibility was about 30 metres and it's not raining, but you look down at your jacket, everything is soaked yeah, because yeah. the air is yeah. so thick of moisture. Oh, this could be our hardest day, or our hardest, our biggest day. Oh, and I think it'll be the hardest because I think conditions, I mean, the biggest challenge Scotland's thrown up so far is the fact that you can ride two miles and being completely different temperatures, visibility, weather, like it was glorious sunshine yeah. to freezing cold mist in front of our faces where you couldn't see the we, next turn. Yesterday, we were at <laughs> Aviemore, yeah, a yeah. ski resort. Yeah, yeah, too hot. In Scotland, and we were too hot. We were shedding layers, and 20 minutes later, we were putting the layers Shivering, back yeah, on. Yeah. Plan for the day. So the plan for today is to get to the coast, uh, west coast yeah yeah, yeah. the west coast and, and we are winding our way all the way around the west coast until so I think we're heading broadly I'll put a rough towards, map here yeah, yeah, just yeah. so you he can see it heading out towards Ullapool yeah and then working down all the way around the coast from Ullapool down to Applecross do the Applecross Pass and then we keep working our way down through past Fort William and then towards Glasgow mileage 350 which is, for the route we're doing, so windy, it's that windy. is colossal. Yeah. If we, we're going to have to do minimal stops, like pit stops, like eating on the run, I don't think we're going to be able to have our luxury five-star lunch like we did yeah. yesterday. Yeah, that's a shame, um, I'm not going to lie, that's yeah, a shame. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to do pit stops, fast run, and we might get there before dark. What's, how long is it going to take with no stops? Doing 60 miles an hour at well, the speed limit. Which we won't. Which we I won't. think our average, bearing in mind some of the roads we're doing, we're going to be averaging 30 to 35 miles an hour. Yeah. So you're looking at 10 hours moving time. 10 hours moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so we... So no breaks, we'll get there by six. So we can afford two hours of breaks to get there yeah, before th dark. This is a colossus of a mission, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll hit the road. <laughs> I'm excited. I feel like I've had enough rest, so... Let's go.
stop briefly to put on the waterproofs because the rain started. Stopped about half an hour ago to put on all of the thermals because it got colder. We checked the forecast. The warmest it's going to be today is about 12 degrees, so every single layer is on. But when you're in this kind of scenery, all I can think is skyfall. And then in my head, I'm just singing the Adele song in my head. It's spectacular, but you can feel that the, the weather's definitely closing in now. So I think this could be the kind of weather that we have for the rest of the day. Danny, how's progress? <laughs> Slow. <laughs> We're at 30 miles an hour average? Less than that, I think. On this particular bit, anyway, through, uh, it's probably more like 20. Oh, it's a single track road for the last, what, 10, 15 miles? Feels like forever, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like you're saying, you start taking this spectacular scenery for granted. It's, yeah, yeah. it's never ending, is yeah, it? Yeah. It goes on and on. 100%. And, and you're, it, it's, it's torture because you want to look around but you're constantly fearing a car coming over the crest of the next hill or uh, so many blind summits and, and what have you. So we're, you're... we're 16 miles away mm. from Apple Cross, yeah. the big one. Yeah. You're on a 400 kilo bike loaded yeah. up. <laughs> this pass coming up 30 minutes ahead of us in that yeah. direction. Last time I did it about a year and a half ago, half of our group decided not to do it and actually take the long route round and we know of a couple of guys with cruisers yeah, yeah. who actually would rather not do this on a bigger yeah, bike yeah. how do you feel on a, a 400 kilo bike uh I, I i genuinely don't know what's ahead so at the moment um somewhat apprehensive i would say from uh, based on some of the reviews of of, of, of other folks but um i'm sure it'll be fine how have you been so far with it? It's been all right. I mean, there's a couple of bits on here where we've had almost vertical switchbacks and things like that. And the old girl, she's 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 fine. I was, she, I was she, filming yeah, actually that last bit. Oh, so there yeah, were some yeah. seriously steep bits yeah, there, yeah, weren't there? Yeah. Okay, this is this is really a kind of a bit of the culmination about what the the whole route's been to get to this apple yeah, yeah, cross, yeah. isn't it? It's like something out of out of Lord of the Rings. The the road, this has surprised me, the road is so quiet because this is not a route that anyone would go other than to specifically experience this road. This is the only road to get to it. Yeah, and did you see the sign at the start, which blows my mind, that this is the route to avoid an 18-tonne limit? 
like <laughs> so i'm like what's coming along here that was uh yeah Wow. So, uh, yeah, I don't know how, how anything's getting up here that's that heavy. I here. have no idea, but Danny, you're in for a treat. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, there'll be food as well here, won't there? Oh, it's down there, probably. Yeah. 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 We made it. That was a, a seriously, seriously tough day. We're just north of Glasgow. Bikes parked outside. I'll flip the camera, show you what we've got for the night. This accommodation is £122 a night, Airbnb. D-lock on and Danny's got about three different bits of security built into his Harley, so they will both, I'm sure, be fine. Number 48 right between the two black doors. I don't think anything has changed here at all. Hard wearing, stripped back, built to last. Ours is the top floor. No lift or anything like that. No carpet, no wood, everything. Stone and concrete. 
and all of the individual doors are different. But the massive, massive old wooden windows. Here we are. This is really, I think, very good value because it's a very big, fairly grand old property. Two doors, two doors to get through. Big living area. Apologies if I'm out of breath. Whew. Very nice bathroom. In fact, that's the first time I've seen that with a kind of view. My bedroom with a double bed in the corner and a view out to the main road there. The master bedroom. That, that is lovely. Again, huge windows and a view down to the street. And finally, surely this must be where Danny is. The final room. Yes, vegetating there. That's how I look, by the way, if I flip the camera. Half vegetative state with a window. And I'll call that a semi-view and a little kitchen area, but it's all beautifully done. I can see Danny staring daggers at me. We need to go and get some food. We're both starving. like that for ages as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they do it. My white boots. <laughs> Let's get rid of that as well. Oh. Danny, they are the, the most ridiculous looking boots they you've are, got. They? Yeah. So We've they're... had the exact same scenarios here. This is a normal pair of boots. <laughs> and this is what Danny's been walking around with. I don't understand what's going on. Allegedly uh, it's salt water. Yeah. But they got wet. I would believe out. you if mine didn't look. But look, yeah. I mean, it is. That is very, very strange. It's like though. a white. Powder. Yeah. Colombian boots. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> Colombian boots. How do you feel? Pretty tired. I'm shattered. Yeah. Do you know, the funny thing is, we were, we were coming out of the petrol station. We were both filling up. I went in first to pay. And you were then going in and we passed each other. And we were such vegetables. You looked at me and went, you right? And I went, all right. Like we didn't know each other. Just nothing, <laughs> nothing at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's start off, first of all. So we finished day three. We're, we're both like, properly shattered, honestly. I think we've worked out it's near enough makes no difference. Three 10-hour days. Mm. We've done 1,100 miles. So we're averaging about 370 miles a day. Let's, um, we're going to have a quick update now because we're going to diverge tomorrow. So tomorrow yes. is, we'll get to that in a second, all about smashing out the mileage. We've got yeah. a huge mileage. You're going to go to Ipswich, I'm off to London. Yeah. yeah. First off, the bikes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Th they've got to be pretty accomplished bikes to do three 10-hour days on the trot. Without any sniff of a hiccup as well, like mechanically both been very sound, don't they? Courtesy of the Joes, I suppose. Joe at El Lobo uh, and George who and Joe serves in Martin Joe in the works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the first big trip you've done. Yes. How has the Road King been? The, the first big trip on the Road King, yeah, it, and it's it, uh, it's it's awesome. Like it, it's it's so um, like the engine so effortless. Yeah. And it kind of you know that kind of understressed big American lump kind of it, with all talk and all bottom end sort of ground is great on roads like this and the, and especially when you, you know we're going these never-ending curves and you know yeah. tight bends and i said and being pretty lazy with the gearbox not having to work the gearbox loads because you know you've got so much torque that you can just pull out of every uh, and every exactly that when yeah. you're going to overtake i have to preempt you getting ready to overtake and drop a gear yeah, yeah because yeah. otherwise i won't keep up with the overtakes a few times you actually left me yeah, and yeah. i had to wait for two more cars to go past before overtaking yeah 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 yeah, no, it is the the talk is addictive actually, and uh, and and yeah, probably underrated in terms of obviously all we've seen. We haven't seen many 
Harley's out in uh, today. Like it's what? largely been GSs. <laughs> Seventy percent of bikes. Probably it's eighty plus. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. And, and uh, but yeah, but certainly dominated by adventure and sports, and and for all the right reasons, it'd be a ton of fun around around those roads. But there's something to be said as well for the effortless nature of of, of a V twin and the torque it gives you in terms of not having to work you know the gearbox so hard so and it's been a fine sight me getting yeah, to yeah. watch the the back <laughs> view of that harley has been amazing roads in scotland pretty special think? pretty yeah. special i think i think one of the most interesting things is that it was the ones that we weren't expecting that blew us away so that road when we got off the apple cross pass today so pretty much from Leaving the Applecross Pass, yeah, which was meant to be the road of the day, yeah, wasn't and, it? The road of the trip, road of the trip, and we and we lost it to the fog. I mean, uh, I've tried filming with Insta three hundred and sixty. There's there's nothing. It's just whiteness. They're just such thick air with moisture. You yeah. can see nothing, and the visibility is no more than forty meters. It was a whiteout. I'm, I'm I'm just trying to work out which road was the absolute star of the show. And it was it was that one to the, the last road we did. Yeah, yeah. Today, wasn't yeah, yeah. it? Yeah, And it was it was from was it from Fort William down to Loch yes, Lomond? Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and and it was it was just incredible. And riding into that like the the gorge yeah. or the valley kind of thing with the huge sort of um, hills and mountains building up around. That you was, I would say, the road of the entire trip. And we didn't plan it. We no. had no idea this was going to be the best road of yeah, the trip. Yeah, yeah. In fact. You planned the two beauty spots for this four-day trip, <laughs> yeah. which was... Which was the North Yorkshire Moors, which we lost to the fog. We, we could nothing. have been anywhere. Yeah, yeah. awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then the Applecross Pass. And we saw nothing. Which, uh, when we were at the top, we, when we started to come down, we saw it was quite nice. Yeah. Um, but the top's, what, 600 plus metres, and we were just in a cloud, basically. Uh, a very wet cloud. Yeah. Um, and it was, we'll have to write the road we're talking about. Yeah, I'll put these down. in the written description because especially the last one we were on, that was staggering. I think it was for the, about 45 minutes. I think it was the A82. I'm just looking okay. at the map. I yeah. think that's what it was. And it was unbelievable. Spectacular, yeah, yeah. wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the roads. I, I would say, actually, one extra thing I was realizing as we were coming to the end of our trip today, we left at. 7.38 a.m. Mm -hmm. We got here at about 8 p.m. Yeah, yeah. That's 12 hours out door to door with 10 hours riding of that. Yeah, yeah. After doing 10 hours day to day for the past yeah. three days. Yeah. Um, how, how do you feel about that 10 hour days? It's pretty full on. I think, I think if you were to do this, you'd have to do one of two things. If, if you if you really wanted to see all of Scotland properly and really enjoy these roads, you even need um, to factor in a day where you get off the bike. If you want to do it in less time, you could do the 10 hour days, yeah. but then tomorrow probably needs to be a non-bike day or, yeah. or certainly a really easy one. Or you just need a bit more time and, and maybe make them 200 mile days. Let's get on to this then. Yeah, yeah. Can it be done? Can you do <laughs> Scotland from the, the east of England, the south yeah. of England, and genuinely enjoy Scotland in what is a long weekend, four days. Is it possible in your eyes? I think the catch is when you say genuinely enjoy, because yeah. the bit that takes the edge off is the constant sort of thing, and it's in your back of your head going, I've got to make progress. Yeah. Got to make pro like, yeah. we, we, otherwise, we're going to be, you know, arriving at dark or we're going to. And, and that probably, there's probably five or six times today where if it had been a, a much more laid back trip, we would have stopped and gone, yeah. look at this and yeah. stopped Eating inside the road. Nicer. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and whereas we were just on a charge because we knew we had so much difficult mileage to do. Um, and that was the thing today as well, which I didn't fully appreciate was the physicality of some of those roads. Yeah. You know, when you're manhandling a big, heavy bike, and it's turn after turn, switchbacks and bends and all that shit. You get later on in the day, and you you know you've been you know you've been doing it, and yeah. and sometimes a mini roundabout felt like a big task. To you us. were saying to me, like you you said, 
did I look lazy by the end on the roundabouts? Because you're getting wider and yeah, wider yeah, yeah. on the roundabouts. Yeah, it felt, uh, Do you uh, realize we were, we were 12 hours today, yeah, and, yeah. but riding for 10 hours. This is how incredible Scotland is. I honestly think every single mile that we rode today was breathtakingly stunning. Yeah, yeah. And that's 10 hours riding yeah. on the trot. What other countries in the world, really, can you have 10 hours of solid riding where every single mile yeah, yeah. of those 10 hours is the most breathtaking scenery you've ever seen? Mm. And it's so varied. Camping. Yeah. Would you recommend it? Would you suggest people camp over hotels? Uh, the, the benefit of camping was um, the freedom. Like we could have, in hindsight, I think, if you were doing this trip again, I'd, after that spot we found, I would say let do do wild camping for several days and lose the agenda and just go, we're going to be up here for a few days. Don't know what the agenda is. We'll stop where we stop. We'll ride where we ride. You save two hundred pounds a night. Save a load it's of two hundred yeah, pounds yeah. compared yeah. to the properties yeah. we were looking at, and that's two hundred pounds you could spend on citronella candles to keep the midges away. <laughs> so like, just surround the whole camp in citronella. Because that was like, horrible, wasn't it? It was midges. quite annoying. It was horrible. Yeah. 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 yeah, the amount of cutting I'm going to have to get Monica to do to bleep out your swearing. Yeah, because you quite... got attacked badly. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be quite a tough job because there was a lot. Of swearing. There was a lot. What would you yeah. favour, camping or Airbnbs? What would you recommend? Uh, saving the money, having the experience of camping, or the comfort, the easy living of an Airbnb? I would get spend a bit more money on a tent that was easier to put up, yeah. still big, but but one that maybe one of those air frame yeah. ones or something like that. I don't I know. I so you hadn't mess around with poles um, and camp because the experience was awesome. Like that like, was the most unforgettable bit of the yeah, trip, wasn't that, it? That that was a lifetime, like kind of something you'll never forget. You know, being being we were kind of on like a like precipice, weren't we? Sort of overlooking like that that valley, and you know, getting the fire going and eating, you know, some fairly basic stuff. But just you know, s sat around there and, and a bottle of wine and everything else. It was it was just awesome. What do we have tomorrow? The reason we're not For celebrating is because. We, we've got an early start tomorrow. We're yeah, a long yeah, way from finish, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, yeah, try and get out before rush hour because we've got to get through Glasgow. So we're, we're west of Glasgow now. Um, and, uh, and, and so we've got to plough through Glasgow, M74 down, and then I think sort of cut across the A1. Miles? Uh, 450-ish, uh, maybe a bit more. This will take um, both of our our miles by the end of it, as near makes no difference, one and a half thousand miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is gigantic. Yeah. That's just about 370, 400 mm. miles a the, day. Yeah. I have cruise control and highway pegs for tomorrow, which I'm pretty <laughs> which are going to get heavy oh, usage. I have nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, they are going to get some heavy usage, I think. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll see you all in the morning. I'll, I'll make sure I do some quick B-roll bets. I mean, it'll be ridiculous. It's going to be before 6 a.m. From a it? service station. Yeah, from a service <laughs> station. That's it. But I will make sure I'll take you to the very end so I can give you a final, very quick sum up of the entire trip. Good morning, all. It's quarter to six, seven degrees, and I slept probably the best I've slept this entire time. But I'm in that unpleasant place where I know it's really cold outside so I've worn every single thing I can and I'm now sweltering so I need a bit of wind to cool me down but we're ready slightly early in the schedule to hit the road probably about eight hours and if we can get back by about three to four p.m that would be a huge result today we're going to try and miss all of the traffic and get past Glasgow before rush hour starts. There once was a ship that put to sea And the name of that ship was the Billy O.T. The winds blew harder, bow dip down Blow me, bully boys, blow Soon may the weatherman come To bring us sugar and tea and rum One day when the tanning is done we'll take our leave and go She had not been two weeks from shore When down on her a right whale board The captain called all hands and swore to take that whale in tow Thank you.
back in time for lunch that's 450 ish miles north of glasgow to ipswich i've come here because i need to sort some stuff out that is 28 miles short so i've just calculated it of 1600 miles so 400 miles a day scotland everyone knows it it's glorious from north to south every mile of it it's a glorious country the thing that surprised me most about this trip camping. This was a revelation for me. I didn't expect to like camping as much as I did. It makes it more enjoyable sometimes when you're doing it with someone, but also on top of that, Danny had this 90 pound gas stove and he bought these five pound meals, which were in a packet. You just put the packet in the stove, put some water in it and it cooks it. But it's a nice quality meal, no preservatives, whole food, really tasty and there's no cleaning up. So it's after five minutes, a full meal right in front of you. And that is a revelation. And that means that I've got in my head now some kind of maybe semi-epic camping trip through Europe and maybe beyond. <laughs> That's how much of a revelation that, that was. I'll wrap it up there. Unforgettable trip. I, I will genuinely have this now ingrained in my mind it was that memorable that enjoyable so thank you so much everyone for watching i'm going to go now and rest and i'll see you in the next one there once was a ship that put to sea and the name of that ship was the billy ot the winds blew harder bow dip down blow me bully boys blow